And I said, well, I'm still, I still am coaching. Okay. You're still doing, it's just, you're dealing with adults, which just have a few more wrinkles and fat cells, but they're just like dealing with children or kids or the young adults. Uh, because I think, I think innately people want to be coached. I think everybody wants to be better. I think everybody wants to uh, be the best they can possibly be. And I think that's what coach is all about. I think sometimes people misconceive what coaching really is. And I think they think that it's like the Maxwell's five levels of leadership is you got the whistle around your neck. You got the authority. You can bench them. And that's not what coaching is all about. It's about bringing out the best. I know, uh, you know, Pat Summit, the great coach at, um, at uh, Tennessee that she's passed now, but her, she had the T concept, T-E-A, you teach, you encourage, you assist. And I think you raise great people in Primarica the same way you raise great kids. Uh, first of all, you got to understand what they want 
And I think it brings it back to the new recruits sitting there. They got to do, they got to discover what do they really want. Absolutely. And then, you know, how good do they really want to be at that? You know, Nick Saban says, you know, be the best. You have to beat the best and beat the best. You have to know what the best are doing. And then you have to be willing to do it yourself. Well, I think that that's what's great about Primerica. We can take anybody that wants to be the best or be their best. They don't have to be, want to be the best, but they want to be the best they could possibly be their at best. whatever. Yeah, exactly. Whatever level that is. And then our job is to coach them up to that point. So if we're not growing, and I think that's why it's so important as a new recruit coming in, they need to realize, hey, if I'm ever going to build a big business, I'm going to have to become a big coach. As Maxwell's law of the lid, I can't bring somebody somewhere I'm not willing to go. It doesn't necessarily mean you've actually been there, but I could be willing to go there. So you have both. You have two sides of this thing. You have those who, you're, who are being coached. That's like a new person coming in. <laughs> That to be coachable. So it doesn't necessarily mean you've actually been there, but I could be willing to go there. So you have both. You have two sides of this thing. You have those who are who are being coached. That's like a new person coming in. That to be coachable, and then you have to have a coach who's going to help those people that are coming in to get that next level. But just like how I think I, I raised. Just like how I think I, I raised you and Lauren as, as you know, when you're young. Brings it back to the new, whatever level that is. 
you're being coached, that's like a new person coming in, they have to be coachable, and they have to have a coach who's going to help those people that are coming in to get that next level. But just like how I think I, I raised you and Lauren as, mm-hmm. as, you know, when you're young people, I don't, I've never breathed and do it my way, hit the highway. I know a lot of people coming in, they're told, don't reinvent the wheel. You know, my philosophy, I don't agree with that. I think that uh, the newest person coming in sometimes has fresh eyeballs. They see things that we don't see because we've been, we tend to get in this thing. We kind of get in a groove, do it the same old, same old. And, uh, you know, the old concept of is everybody's thinking the same way. Then somebody's, somebody's not thinking. thinking. And I think the newest person coming in needs to understand, we want to hear your ideas. We want to hear, you know, your concerns. We want you to speak your voice. We want you to understand we do have a system, but we want to make that system better. And that's what Primerica is all about, making the system better. And all great coaches are always looking, once again, going back to Nick Saban in Alabama, one of the things he hates to hear anybody say is, well, it's not broken, so we don't need to fix it. Oh, no, no, no. We need to break it and then fix it again and make it better and better and better. So one thing you, you've done a good job of is that you've been coachable your entire life. But I can remember, th- and, and I told your mom, and I, and I really tried to do this. If I ever saw you become too subservient to everything, I said, oh, yes, sir, dad. Okay, yes, sir. I knew something was wrong because you had stopped thinking. And I think from a, from our standpoint, when a new person comes in and from a new person standpoint coming in, they need to understand, hey, you can think, you can even think outside the box, keep it compliant now, okay? Right, and if we tell you something, mm-hmm. we're probably telling you for your own good, but we also want your mm-hmm. feedback. So part of this is it goes both ways, but you hit it right up front. The other thing you did coming in is like when you played sports and you remember, where, you know where I'm going with this, right? I used to have to come time, get you up, get you out to the shoot those shots, get you in the gym. But at some point in time, you, you got to a point, you said alone, yeah. you got on your own. Right. And then you took the ball and run with it. Okay. Yeah. So maybe hit that with a new recruit. So absolutely. Yeah. The, I don't know. So the, the first thing being coachable, yeah. you know, uh, is I think everybody, when they come in here, um, some people are extremely coachable. Some people aren't coachable at all. Right. right. Some people want to do it their own way. And some people want to follow the system completely. You know, right. so we got to understand there's going to be that going on. Right. right. But it is very important for people to be, be coachable because, like you said, right. we want them to win. They want to win. Yeah. Right. And, and we it, do have a proven system. And we have a proven system. Right. It right. works. Yeah. And so um, so it'd be crazy to try to come in here and just to to do things totally differently. Right. And, and you can adjust some. But things, when right? you agree, it's also natural. For, yeah. For them to kind of question and doubt things because, right. I mean, they, and they kind of do want to do it their own way. And sometimes we have to tell them, uh, we understand your own way, but this is a successful way. However, let's listen. Let's talk about right. that. Would you agree? I mean, yeah, I think, I think, you know, when I got started, it was, there were so many success stories uh, that I've, that I saw up, up close and personal in your hierarchy, in our office. Right. right? And so I, I was thinking, you know, this would be crazy for me to try to do anything different besides follow the exact system they're running because it's obviously working. And if I follow that system and if I work hard and if I'm coachable, then it's going to work for me. Right. And I knew I was going to do I don't want to cut things. you off, but I want you to address this, too, because I think a lot of people um, come in and they're, 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 they say they're coachable. What it really means is they want everybody to do everything for them. Right. And they're not coachable because being coachable means you learn, you grow, you develop. On the other hand, there's a lot of people that, quote unquote, are called leaders or coaches. It's do it my way, hit the highway. Yeah. And it's like, OK, you know, you're to be seen, not heard. And if I need your if you need your feedback, I'll ask you for it. I don't think that's good either. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I'm yeah, saying? See, there? I think that's another thing. And you said it a little bit earlier. The reason why you were such a great coach, not only in basketball, but in Primerica and something I've learned from you uh, to do with my team, you know, to do with my uh, organization now is that the, the, you said the TEA. Right. But the, the thing about the first two teach and encourage. Right. I mean, you first of all can't teach anybody something you don't know. So right. you got to learn. Good. You got to be a learner in this business. You got to you got to learn Primerica so that you can teach it to others. That's what right. great leaders right. do. And you got to learn it great because if you learn it great, then you're going to teach it great. The master copy to your people. Concept. Yeah, the master. So copy. you're saying up front, they need to be cog- cognizant of this, aware of this. Hey, I'm 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 learning this not so I can just do it, but so eventually I can teach it. Teach it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I never wanted to be. Uh, you know, a master of life insurance and investments so that I could be the best life insurance salesman or the best uh, investment guru. Although I became very good at those things uh, because I put so much time and effort into learning, but I really wanted to master those things so that I could teach it to others and to have a business. And I learned that from you, you know, so, so you got to master those things so that you can teach it properly down throughout your organization. And then other people can teach it down through them. And the second thing, which I think is the most important thing that I saw you do from an early age, uh, coaching us in basketball, but also uh, a, a tremendous amount in Primerica is the encourage. You know, I think our organization 
and, and mm-hmm. it starts with you and it starts then back down to me. This just does, does an incredible job of encouraging people. You know, when people join Primerica, most likely they've never really been encouraged in any right. way, form or fashion, you know, from, from anybody. And right. so, so to have, to come into a business like this, where they have not just one people, but typically, you know, not just one person, excuse me, but typically two, three, four, five people encouraging them and helping them and talking to them about doing big things with their life and, and showing them what they can actually have, right. Yeah. Versus telling them what they can't. Right. And that's what typically happens in a situation with most people at jobs and other places that they're, they're just simply told they can't accomplish things and they're never encouraged. They're just beat down. And mm-hmm. so something a great leader does or a great coach does is that they encourage. And then, like you said, they assist, you just encourage them and encourage them and help them uh, become successful in primary. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Let me go back to that. Encourage. I think that, like you said, because maybe some people have been raised in an environment all their life, they've not been encouraged. It's almost like everything they do is not good enough. Right. I mean, it's like, uh, I remember, you know, you you had quite a few A's in your report card. And I remember one year you had probably more A's in a report card in one year. And I had my entire career in my report right. card. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, but same point in time, some parents, if their kids don't get straight A's, they get one B. All they focus on is the B. Right. So encouragement means, you know, when you're coming up, I think as a new leader, you're thinking sometimes, well, I don't know if I have the authority or the almost like the right or the experience to encourage somebody. So even the newest person coming in, they can encourage somebody when oh, you're, yeah. I mean, the brand new people. Because when you came in, you know, you really, you built your team. Uh, that was your team. Right. Uh, you're always, you know, uh, bragging on them, encouraging them. And you did it verbally. You did it physically with plaques and certificates. And, right. you know, we just try to spoil the stink of our people in our hierarchy. And you, so what could a new person do coming in if they want to kind of get their little team going and get their business going? They don't have to wait to become a vice president, start right. making a lot of money, to do things like that. You did it early on with your team. And that encouragement also, the more people know you care about them, the more effective motivation is right. because they don't think it's a phony thing. They don't think you're trying to manipulate them. There's a difference in motivation, manipulation, Absolutely. manipulation is just benefit you. Motivation moves them, which does benefit you in, in a turn. So I think the newest person, to, so maybe tell them some of the things you did early on to kind of, or some of the things a new person could do early on to encourage their people. Cause they're not like you are where you're real successful. Right. They're just kind of learning together, which is a topic I want to hit. Right. Well, even whenever I started, I know I wasn't successful yet. I was just getting started, but I saw you, encourage others. And I was like, okay, well, this is what I'm supposed to do. Right. right. So they, I followed a leader who was already encouraging people. So I would say for a new person, you know, look at what your leader or look at what other leaders are doing. Keep your eyes out because uh, and yeah. encouragement is attractive that, that you can, mm-hmm. people are attracted to being encouraged. Amen. Right. That's what they want. This yeah. business, that's what attracts people back right. uh, to Primera. You know, there's them just coming to an office and being encouraged and say, Hey, thank you for coming. We're glad to have you here. Uh, you're going to do awesome things here in this business. That's that's attractive to people. Yeah. They want to come back. And I hit that. It's really important. So little things. OK, they came to the office. See, you said something there with people don't realize it. And, and you do a great job. They uh, they're early on. They just they just come up to the office. Man, I'm so glad you're here. So, you know, you're I'm fired up. You came tonight or this and other versus just kind of taking it for granted. They showed up or exactly. they come to training class or they go on their first appointment. They get a, they pass their license. You celebrate, you know, you, you kill the fat calf and break out the rings and you have a party. Right. And you've done a great job of that, celebrating other people's success. So in the early stages, all the way today, uh, you would have to say that has to be one of the most important things you've done. Absolutely. What I've learned is that if I encourage them earlier in the small things, we will celebrate them later on in the big things. You know, I mean, they will eventually be you know, achieving these things because do we encourage them even in, like I said, showing up smaller, smaller things. But eventually they'll be big leaders in the company and then we're celebrating them and really encouraging them even more. But the most important thing is they're accomplishing great things here. And a lot of it comes from the beginning of you encouraging somebody and telling and believing in them like you always do. Done a great job of encouraging and believing in them uh, and, and then, again, helping them become successful, assisting them in becoming successful. Well, you've done a great job. You've learned the right way. You're doing great things. So I think this is absolutely fantastic. Well, I love you. I appreciate it. Great job. Love you. Great Thank job. You. Right. Good, morning. Good, morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. How's everybody doing? Great. How's everybody doing? Great. Yeah. All right. All right. I appreciate you guys coming on time. That was great. Um, we have an important training to go through uh, today. And um, it's not going to be normally what we do on Fridays. And on Fridays, we usually talk about um, 
technical stuff, uh, which I love. I think it's very important to always, uh, you know, be extremely competent technically. Okay, you have to be good in the field. This is a, a business where if you do not know what to do, you will not get results. You will not get checks, and you do not. You will not have the longevity here. Okay, but there's also uh, the business building side, the mentality side. Obviously, we're coming from. Um, you know, an unbelievable event, four or five days of immersion within the Primerica community. Um, you see the bigness of the company and how much they do for us. And now it's, okay, what do we have to do, right? And, and if it was your first convention, raise your hand. Okay, raise them up. Okay, awesome, good. Um, so if it was your second or third or fifth, or I think this is my seventh uh, convention, you can't get numb to it, right? Sometimes you think, oh, this is how it always is. And, you know, every company is like this. There's all of these people making money, all these, you know, young people, 21, 22, 23, making 100,000, running their own business. There's people jumping four or five diamonds in a year, or seven people going over a million dollars a year annually in the last two years. You know, I mean, that, that's not how it is, okay, in the real world. Now, that's, that's our Primerica bubble. And the company that the sales force has created and what we've dominated in the industry, you saw in the last couple of days. OK, so what does that mean to you? OK, Glenn Williams is not going to make a phone call for you. Mike Sharp's not going to go to the kitchen table. OK, Hector Lamar, Rick Susie, they're not going to help you get out of bed. OK. And you have your own motivation, you have your own fear, you have your own goals, your own determination, you have your own schedule. Uh, you know, I know a couple of people after we got back, a couple of people called me and, you know, I, I forgot who said this at the convention and it's true, right? Uh, you know, you make a big decision, you come back and then your life falls apart, right? Uh, and that that's happening right now, right? And you're in the midst of it. Um, and you've got only one way to go and that's go through or go around or give up, right? I mean, you only got a couple options. And so I, you know, I want to let you in on a little bit of my thought process, okay? Um, not just individually, but also as a group, as a unit, what we can do, what you can do um, to grow, right? Because at the end of the day, right? Most of you came here for what I have right now at the minimum. I don't want to shortchange you, you know, hopefully you can get bigger than me, more success than I have. Okay. I mean, you know, some of you guys are younger than me, younger in the business. All of you have what I've done as a, a uh, an example. So I think that there's, you know, hey, yeah, if you do what I do, you'll have what I have, if not more. Okay. Um, and I don't mean that facetiously. Okay, this is not something where it's like, well, you know, I kind of hope you don't know. I do. You know, I really do. That means that our system has worked. Mm -hmm. But you want at least a half a million dollar income passively, two hundred fifty thousand dollar income passively. Okay, now it's not always about how much money you make; it's how you make your money. How much money do you make when you're not working? How much, you know, how? What's your trajectory, right? Mm -hmm. So I have what I have because of this right here, this meeting, these meetings, these Primerica trainings of, say, on a Friday, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. 39 people today and the six we have online. Huh? Huh? Oh, 17 is three when I started. So in the 17 people, okay, so you, can you skew the numbers? Sure, you can skew them. Right. Some of you guys might have five, 10, 12, one, you, just you. Right. So you can, you may, you know, may you have a fraction of what I have. So you'll have a fraction. OK, if you do a little bit more than me, you'll have a greater fraction in terms of your income. You could have, 
three people, 10 people, 15 people, and make 100,000, 200,000. I don't know, right? Say if Samir has, if I have 40, what do you have, Samir? 15? Right? And he, But if I make 500 he could, or 450, he could be at 300, but he has 15, right? So you could skew it because he might be a little bit stronger personally than I am, okay? Or where his comp in, the products, all that stuff, right? So you can skew it. But at the end of the day, I have 100 people showing up to my meetings weekly, minimum. And I have a $40,000 a month. Okay. And always remember this meetings, Primerica trains, which we're going to talk about. That's what we're going to talk about today. Okay. What they're designed to do for you is they're a visual. It's all they are. They're a visual for you. A picture is worth a thousand words. So it doesn't matter how much I can talk to you. Everything we do is to show you how to build your business. Because this is a lot more than KTs and interviews and setting appointments. Even though those are blocking and tackling, it's fundamental if you don't do that. But once in a while, you got to say, why am I in this business? Because if you can put together a room full of people, a hundred, you can make $40,000 a month passively. And that's what I want you to lead here because that's what I left the convention with after. And this isn't this isn't something that is new to me. But sometimes when you, you're on a long journey, you, you nod at the wheel, right? So you go to the convention and you talk to people and you you pick their brains and you, you, you talk with your teammates and you figure out, OK, hey, what, what, what do we have to do? How are we going to grow? So. Couple. Um, things. Bruce Cox said this. Right? He said, if they miss two meetings in a row, they quit. Mm -hmm. Right. In, in my religion, you know, a lot of you guys who know me after training, I usually go to prayer later in, in the afternoon. Right. That's when we are like kind of Sunday is Friday. That's our day of worship we go in congregation we pray and it's a big deal right you're supposed to go pray with other people in your religious organization once a week okay and you go and then the the imam who's like the pastor or the leader of our organization gives a 30 to 45 minute sermon on whatever right you know whatever it is it's you know uh, whatever's on you know could be some current events but always kind of going through uh bringing it back to what this means for us, you know, in current times and goes through our scriptures or the book, whatever it is. Right. If you miss three in a row, what do they say in our religion? If you, this, is, this is how important attendance is in our religion. If you miss three in a row, what do they say? You're not Muslim. If you miss three in a row, you can't miss three in a row. I'm on the little email serve from my mosque. Right. And every day they're sending out an email volunteering opportunity this time we're reading this together we're going to study this this thing and every time they're trying to gather people every time it's always something right it, every time and it's like oh okay this is cool this is actually very relevant to me it's like oh hey you know it could be children raising kids raising this so your daughter wants to do this this they're having this i mean all this stuff you know what is the current economic climate all this stuff like all these things you know saving you know Fasting, all this stuff. <coughs> okay. Where was it? Fasting. Yeah. Cast you into hell. <laughs> <laughs> you. <laughs> I have the power to do that. Just <laughs> <laughs> so you know. <laughs> um, it's always trying to you know because if more people come more people volunteer if more people come more people donate if more people come there's more youth pro all this stuff comes from people coming right 
my dad was probably one of the first people in the community here, right? In our religious community, he said that there was only like 10 or 15 families. Now it's like thousands. We have seven to 10, like within the same zip code prayers. And it's just, it's, it's, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of people, right? But somebody had a vision to create a community and it all started with attendance, right? This is nothing new. This is not, this is not, oh, this is, no, 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 no. This is not, you know, your job, it's the same thing. They try to get you to show up all the time. School, they try to get you to show up all the time. You see all these commercials and, you know, people having family in the University of Phoenix. They're trying to get you to show up, pay money, show up. Oh, we're having this. We're having a real estate class. It's all about meeting attendance, right? Are you growing your meeting? Are you growing your attendance? Are you growing your tribe and your following? Are you growing your team? And it's hard to do, right? And that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, I talked to Christian David one time, right? Spent a lot of time with Christian David. Long. I mean, he was probably the first real mentor I had in this business outside of people upline down my team. And I befriended him. And I remember he uh, he asked me to do a training for him. And he took me to his country club afterwards for lunch. He said, hey, I'll take you to the club. <laughs> and I was like, okay, cool. And so I was alone with him in the car and I had listened to all his audios. So I knew all his stories. And uh, he did a speech at Aspen in Aspen, Colorado, where he just went over 600,000 and or 500,000, sorry, 500,000. And he was t- saying how he got stuck from t- at 200,000 for almost 10 years. <laughs> Like I was stuck at 200,000 for 10 years. And then within like 36, 48 months, he went to 500,000. Okay, some of you may have heard this. So I had to ask him about this. I asked him, I said, hey, I just was curious because that's crazy that you were at a certain spot for 10 years and then you grew to 500,000. What happened? And he said, I had a conversation with Jim Bone, a million dollar earner from Canada. And Jim Bone said to me, he he told him, I am stuck at 200,000. How do I grow my business? I want to double my income. He goes, have a system and double your attendance. Have a system and double your attendance. Meetings are the game changer. If we can get people to come here and buy in, okay, they have a shot. They have a shot at doing something big. And always remember this. When you're dealing with new people, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, when they miss one meeting, they're never the same. They're never the same. So. If you want what I have or more, any of these big guys, right? Does anybody, and I I mean this, I'm not saying this to to negate anything that people do, okay? Because at the end of the day, a lot of the work that you do, it's not that you're working in vain. It's you're going through people, going through appointments, going through the no's to get the yeses, okay? That's part of our business, okay? But... There is a subculture in Primerica, and I love Primerica because I'm not saying it, but, you know, it's like, hey, you know, Mike Sharp talks about this. He's like, he's like, why would I give people recognition if they can't pay their bills? I got to teach them how to make money. Right. You're not doing anything, but, oh, here's a plaque. Keep going. No, 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 no. This is not. This is about building something real and solid. Right. I know a lot of people. They recruit people. They hire people. They're great at it. I was one of those people. I'm great at that. I'm great at 
the presentation, the sizzle, but my business doesn't grow. I know a lot of people, they can even make money, but their business doesn't grow. And the difference between recruiters and producers and builders is meeting attendance. That's what it is. That if you can grow this meeting and grow this, you can have passive income. And if you think of of people, say, a pastor that tries to grow an organization like we do, a volunteer organization, not something where you can threaten people, not where you can hang paychecks, where they have to follow you based on, on the leadership levels. Production, reproduction, pinnacle, who you are, what you have, all those things. All that pastor would be trying to do is grow the meeting. That's it. Because he knows or she knows. Everything happens from the growth of the butts and chairs. So, some numbers, okay, just to kind of focus on and think about, okay, because I know this is foreign language for some people, right? Number one, obviously, is you. It's you. Are you numb to the meeting? How is your energy level at the meeting? Are you clapping for people? Are you taking notes? Are you being a good example? It's not like, oh, I'm going to grow my meeting. No, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. You know, I showed up to meetings by myself, not forever, but for a long time. Dante, you remember. And I would clean up the room. I would set up. I would show up early. I was. I had no entitlement about coming to meetings. I love coming. I love getting training. I love the food that came into my mind. Anything my RVP asked me to do, I did. Then I got, I graduated into a leadership role. And a lot of that times it was volunteering. I just wanted to be around the other people, find out what was going on. I want to know behind, when they pulled the curtain back, I want to know, why did you pick this? Why did you do this? Why did you do this? And I would just be around everybody because I knew one day I was going to have my own meeting. I was not going to sit in my RVP meeting, RVP's meeting forever. That was my goal. To have a full-timer meeting like this, to have a Saturday, right? And within 18 months, we went out and got our own office because we wanted to do our own meeting. And we still plugged in. We had our super Saturdays, all that stuff. So first is you. Where's your commitment level? And, you know, I was talking to Catherine yesterday, and I know I tell these stories, and they make they make seem a little nightmarish i mean that right because these are true stories they're not anything that you know i have i have a three-day wedding many of you guys know saturday morning i was in training till one o'clock two o'clock right i had training not not someone else's wedding my wedding my own wedding 500 person wedding you know whatever was 60 to seventy five thousand dollars right My own wedding, I was there Saturday morning. I was in training, doing training like I normally do. And I invited people from my wedding to come. They came. There are many people visiting. They were there. They were watching me do my own training. (laughs) My dad, hospital. We these guys were there. They were right there. We just signed the lease. We just gone our own night. I told Dante, this is not like I was like, hey man, I, I gotta go. What happened? My dad, he got the emergency room right there. All right, man, you guys got it. And then I came back. Right. And then Catherine alluded to one yesterday. We were talking. Right. And she was like, you know, I just don't understand. I mean, your your son was born. And she looked. I mean, I know you're not supposed to, but I really felt you were judging me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I guess that's what I get because I judge you guys all the time. Okay? If you feel like I'm judging you, I am. Okay. But I really felt judged. Right. Like I was like. That person, you know, my son was born. I just I had a couple appointments. But then I start thinking about it. It's like I know a lot of people, they're there when their son's born, but they're not there for their entire son's life. Dang. I mean it. Right or wrong. Yeah. I know a lot of people, they attend the wedding, but they don't care about your marriage because the wedding is a party. Marriage is a whole different thing than a wedding. Like we we actually have in our like our imam, 
he talks about weddings. What does he say? Because in our culture, it is disgustingly stupid how people are with weddings. They're all trying to one up everybody. He goes, don't spend money on a wedding. He was basically saying it's a party and some of them don't work out. And you financially bankrupt yourself. Don't do it. It's a party. A marriage is more important than a wedding, right? So like, yeah, I did training in my wedding. But my marriage and my life are more important than the party. But I think about my dad because they always say this, right? Brian Tracy, you know, the mark of a successful person is the time concept they think of, right? If they have a longer, greater time concept, they're more successful, right? So they say, and he uses the exact example of immigrants. Immigrants, when they come, they're not thinking about themselves. They're thinking about a better life for generations to come. Right. So my dad fled a civil war. Left his country, left religion. He came here during segregation and and went to Alabama. Right. My dad was part of the segregated part that, you know, not in the majority. And my dad was an orphan. In our culture, orphan means that you lose your father. Mm -hmm. If you lose your father, you're an orphan. My dad was an orphan. He lost his dad at seven or eight years old. He doesn't even have a picture of his dad. That's how my dad, my dad was born in 1939. He goes, the only picture I have is in my mind. And he left on an educational visa to come to Alabama during segregation, fled a civil war, and he didn't, didn't see his mom for 11 years. He wrote letters. And didn't even get letters back. So I think about like the stupid ass shit I've had to do. It's nothing compared to what other people have to do. Right? Like, uh, you know, they interviewed Shaquille O'Neal the other day. And they said, compare yourself to the greats of basketball. He goes, it's disrespectful. I'll never compare myself to the greats because what they did for the game. It's disrespect. You know, some people, right? Like when they play like even in soccer, right? Luis, you might know a little bit about this, right? Because you, you follow soccer like globally. These players, the African-American players, the black players, they're, some of the other countries are so racist. They literally throw bananas on the field. And they'll keep playing because they know they're playing for the little kids watching them. Like, what do you mean the sacrifice? Like, I had to do a couple of appointments. And I'm, I, I know it, it does sound worse than it is, you know. But I was there in the morning and I went and then I came right back. And then I haven't been able to get rid of my son since. <laughs> like, knowing that, I should have taken like four or five days. If I knew how much of work it was to deal with this kid, right, <laughs> I would have probably taken a baby moon right after baby. I was born. Right? <laughs> But, you know, like 11 years not not talking to your mom. You're a freaking child going to a different country. You can't speak the language. You're writing letters back in 1960. You got one parent. Like what we have to do, is, it's, it's nothing. Man. You know, like in Samir does a great visual of the train. Like you give up a Saturday and a Friday to have. That in your entire life, not forever. I can do whatever I want now. But and Mike Sharp talked about it. He goes, you know, when you're 100 percent committed, what do you say? You're 100 percent free. He goes, you wouldn't think it works that way. But it does. And it's true. See, the problem is you get dragged over everything. Then you got a decision to make all the time. But when you know what you're going to do before it comes up, you're, you're, you're free. You're free. You know, you, you just, you know, you know that, you know. So I don't look at this as chores and things like that. Now, I, I, I understand. Right. I don't. This is not forever. It's not a permanent thing when you burn where you burn. Right. But, you know, the minute you start to slip. 
always remember your team's going to do more of what you do wrong, less of what you do right. I'm not saying you have to be as extreme as me, okay? But, you know, I, I had that mentality for a decade and more, at least a decade, if not more. And I feel that that culture has really been created within our group, okay? And, you know, now kind of looking, you know, we've kind of, we've kind of strayed away a little bit about meetings and things like that. And, and who has suffered? The new people. Because they don't understand the commitment that it really takes to win in business. And they think it's just a kind of a casual thing and they have the wrong mentality and they get slaughtered. Right. So anyways. All right. So it starts with one. It starts with one. That's you. Okay. Next step is two. A partner, a business partner, one recruit. You don't need a hundred. You get one, your business will change, man. You get one foxhole buddy. You get one person in the trenches. Obviously, the quickest way to double your attendance is get partners involved in your team. Okay? And you can't, obviously, immediately you're thinking of who, Caleb? Yeah. I just your voice crack is excessive. <laughs> <laughs> She's not here, so you can say it. It's okay. We're not talking bad about her. <laughs> <laughs> Right. So you're thinking of your partner. This is I know we do a lot of partnership trainings and stuff like that. And, you know, this is not for you to go back and just get in a fight with your partner. <laughs> OK. Right. You know what I'm saying? Calvin? I told you, you should have been there. You missed it. You're negative. I hate you. Okay, <laughs> I've done that. It doesn't work. OK. It doesn't work. OK. It doesn't work. Okay. Why are you laughing? <laughs> And that does not work. Okay. But try to find <laughs> things that uh, common grounds for your partner, if that's the person that you're trying to get. Okay. That, you know, maybe it, it could be an incentive, a movie, a this, a that. You know, I mean, anything that you can get somebody that where they can kind of find their own way, right? Always remember this. This is something for me. Okay. And this is not really on the topic of meeting attendance, but this, this could help you, right? And this, this goes with your recruits too. Okay. Don't try to turn your partner into you and don't try to turn your recruits into you. Okay. They're not going to be you. I can't, I tell, I tell people all the time, I can't even turn my children into me <laughs> and they are my blood DNA. Financially, I've taken care of them. I've been there all the time. They don't like what I like. Right. God is a prankster. <laughs> he gave my, me a son. That's Matt Peterson. Right. <laughs> like, all right, let's throw the football. Can we play switch? No. <laughs> you know, when Chris and Dave is up there talking about video games, I'm looking at Matt. Matt's cheesing because he's looking back. He's like, I know that's your son. <laughs> you love me, but you hate me. You know, no. <laughs> right? You know. <laughs> but. It, you know, I can't make my son. My son likes Legos. My like, son likes video games. You know, I, 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 he, does, he hates soccer. The sports he likes, I didn't play. You know, that's just the way it works. Right? So, you know, you're trying to make your partner into you and they like every audio. You're like, no, man, that's not how it works, man. You know, but, you know, your partner or your recruits are going to find their own way. That's why you expose them to different things, man. And you'd be the best partner you can be, right? I mean that. I'm not trying to be funny about it. It's true, right? You, just, you, you self-improve. You keep your commitments. You show up. You, you operate with integrity. You get better. You read the books. You do all those things, right? You become a person of value. So after one, then it's two. You find your partner, okay? Whoever, business partner. It doesn't have to be your partner, okay? But you get one person in training that has a little bit of the same vision, same like-mindedness, same goals. Your business can take off with one. With one. What's the next number? Oh, well. Four? Or G of that? Who said that? Bruce said that? He said one, four, ten. <coughs> I'm asking. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> What's the number? 
You know it? What's the number? Ten. Ten. Okay. One, two, ten. Ten. There is like you you have a little bit of a following. Okay, you should go psychotic till you have 10 people showing up. You should be inviting like crazy till you have 10 people showing up. That's two rows of people. And you should do your best to keep them color coordinated. <laughs> seated coordinated. I mean it. Like, you know, like take it serious, man. This you're causing a movement. 10 people can change the world, man. You have 10? Okay, you can start getting promoted. You can start making money. You're going to be field training people. You can get some internal competition. This is hiring in bunches. Because if you can gather 10 people to show up one place at the same time, you are starting to become a leader. Look, I'm, I'm not, like I said, I'm not trying to contradict anything you hear. I know there's a double digit recruit call. I totally believe that because you put that Annie in, you get to spend time with Bruce. Absolutely. All that. But <coughs> 10 people showing up. I mean, you should be going so freaking crazy till 10 people are showing up. This business is so much easier when you have a group of people. What's the next number? Yeah. Yeah. 25. Okay. 50 is one of the numbers. Okay. But 25, 25 within 25. <clears throat> now you are developing a leader. A leader will emerge in your 25. Okay. At 25 people, you will be a built 10 by 10. A built 10 by 10. Next number, Josh, 50. 50 is where environment takes over. 50 is where environment takes over. I don't want to say you can start taking off because that's not the point of this talk, but that is where it's like, I don't want to say cruise control, but you can, you know, your foot can come off the gas a little bit. You've done something. You're built at 50. You're built. RVPs can come out. Competition happens. You can have any meeting you want. You can have your own events. Maybe not a faster school, but a super Saturday with 150, 200 people. And the last number is 100. 100, you are elite. You are rare air. You are MVP level. So if we know these are our numbers, and we know that attendance is everything for having a business, passive income, it's the end game. Everything that we do, all the activity we do, is geared towards having more people show up. Every script that we have, every phone call that we have, this has to be worked into everything we do is getting commitments to show up, commitments for people to bring people, who, you know, getting your more committed people, guests, evites, orientations, challenging people to bring people back because our end game is meeting attendance. Why? Because meeting attendance is going to get you it's going to get you free. Now, there's a lot of other skills that you need to learn because I, I agree with what Blake just said. If you don't learn it, you can't teach it and you have no credibility. And some of you, if you don't learn it and can't make money, you won't survive here till you thrive. But your end goal is building your meeting, is getting people here. And this is just a visual of what it's going to look like for you. <coughs> Wait. <laughs> All right. So how do you treat this?
Larry Wydell <clears throat> said you can treat this four ways. Okay, I just want you to understand this, so you understand. This isn't. This isn't. We're not going to try to make people something they're not. Okay, we're going to try to find the right people and then encourage, nourish, feed the right people so they can get big. Okay, I'm not. You know, some people are silent partners. Some people don't want to come to meetings. Okay, that's okay. Okay, you. It's not okay for you. Okay, because you're trying to get free. So you can treat this like a hobby. Okay, anybody have hobbies? Okay. Who has some cool hobbies? <laughs> What's your hobby? I like to play chess. Okay. <laughs> Fishing. In the realm of music. Okay. What is it? Writing. Writing music? Okay. Good. What's your hobby? Skateboarding. Who else? Produce music. Good. Right? What else? Um, um, should I call on you? <laughs> what is it? Okay. Okay. So, like, I like to play basketball. That's one of my hobbies. Okay. I like to play. And once in a while, a great, great while, I'll go out and play. Okay. Now it's like, I mean, like, actual play. I, I'll shoot if I see a ball, but actually, like, run up and down the court and guard somebody. That's like once every two years. Now. Okay. And beginner's luck. And just because I play growing up, I'll make a couple shots, and it's a hobby. I think to myself, man, if I would play this every day, I could be really good. And I'll get excited about my hobby. I'll get a new pair of shoes. Hey, what are the best shoes out right now? Kobe's? All right, I'll go buy them. Because I'm going to play now every day. It's my hobby, but I'm I'm – no, I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah, you know what? This is good. Let's get my competitive juices flowing. I'm going to go. And it's a hobby. I'm going to take it to the next level. I'll go there, get some shoes, get some new matching clothes, right? Maybe even sign up in a league. Okay. Then my back will hurt. <laughs> and I'll quit. I won't do it anymore. And then again, after six or eight months, Kelvin will convince me to go out to the court and the same thing will happen. I'll go out there. I'll make a couple shots. I'll think, man, if I would have stuck with this, I'd be really, it's a hobby. And if you treat this like a hobby, you'll make hobby money. Okay. Which is sporadic money, maybe a couple nickels here and there because you don't treat it like anything more than a hobby, which is cool. That's awesome. This is a hobby for you. You got your license. It's fun. Clap, high five, let me get uh, audio, this and that, but it's a hobby. That's what it is, okay? Call it what it is, okay? The second way you can treat this is like a part-time job, okay? Or I call it school because we got a lot of millennials. You don't get paid for school, okay? But people go and they go to class every day and they, they study and they – they, they never miss their finals, and it doesn't matter what. Hey, when the class gives out the final schedule, that's what it is. When they give out the exam schedule, you don't try to negotiate it. It's a part-time job, and people have part-time jobs. They work retail or they work at restaurants, and you know if they're at all serious about it, they will show up when they're on the schedule. If you treat this like a part-time job, you'll make part-time job money. A couple hundred dollars a week, a couple hundred dollars a month. A thousand dollars a month, two thousand dollars a month. I got licensed with the company. I was part time. When I got to district leader, I made a thousand dollars a month. I've never made less money than that, right? So it's because, and I, you know, did diversification. I did all stuff, but I treat this like a part time job. I showed up. Didn't matter what I had to do. I showed up. I rearranged my schedule to fit around my part time job. The third way that you can treat this is like what? A business owner. A business owner. You know, go talk to other business owners sometimes. Go, go see what they have to go through to run a business. What type of licenses they, what type of certifications, how the industry changes, what type of conventions they have. You understand like there's franchise conventions you have to go to 
You own a little McDonald's. You got to go. It's on your own dime. They make you go. This is not Primerica. They make you go. Subway convention, all this stuff, man, that you have to do. The trade shows that these business owners have to go to, the hours, the schedules they have. But if you get and treat this like a business, you'll make business owner money. Two, three, four, five, six hundred thousand dollars. And the awesome thing about this is you can hire other people with the business owner mentality and then you can have real freedom. Then the last way you can treat this is like a pro athlete. Like these people that we revel and admire, the Kobe's, the Beyonce's, they, 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 they are in the elite of elite. They are the pinnacle. You can treat it like a pro coach, like Nick Saban or Coach K. You understand some of these players, some of these, Mike Sharp, $5 million a year. He makes almost as much money as they do. Some of these coaches that keep coach beat big D1 programs. Many of them don't make $5 million a year, right? I mean, SEC coaches probably. And you'll be speaking at the convention. I'm not there yet. I'm not, I'm not, I know where I am. I'm at that business owner level, right? But you, I, I'm not talking about the MVP. I'm talking about like you're, you are circle of champion, Bruce Koff, right? Where you, no one can find you. No one knows where you are, right? You got a $900,000 earner when he calls you. Where are you? Doesn't know, <laughs> right? 1.4 million. And millions of dollars outside of prime. Millions. <laughs> millions. Because of what he's done and what he's built and the relationships he's created, right? So I don't care how you want to treat it, okay? But here, here's the thing for us, right? And, and you know, we, we spoke about this too. Like, you know, we're trying to transform people into the wrong thing, right? I mean, if they're just not that person, they're not that person. We need to find people that love meetings, man. They love self-improvement. They love meetings. They love recognition. They love clapping for people. They love coming. They love commitment. You know, there, there's people that you got to drag them into the gym. Then there's people you can't get them out of the gym. They're in there. Hours and hours that they live there. Like we go to our gym and we think like, yo, do these people have a job? <laughs> no. Like they're not getting paid because some people, they compete. They actually get paid. They do competitions. But I'm thinking like, they're not getting paid. Do they have a job? What do they do? <laughs> they just never leave. You go there. It's like, did they sleep here? I'm just not sure. <laughs> like, you know, some people, you can't get them off the court. You can't get them off the court. You know, my, my kids, a couple of you guys know, they, I put them in swimming and they're, you know, they're, they're in swimming. And so now you got the meets, right? So you compete and like, you, you know, we compete against the number, I think they were the number one team, right? And so we are, when I called, because this is my kid's first time, I called the coach of the swim team and I was like, hey, you know, they, they just never have done swim. So I'm just want to make sure this is, and they go, hey, our team, we're very relaxed. You know, we're really cool. Don't worry about it. It's not like it's just not that serious. You know, we let everybody come in. Everybody can swim. Um, you know, we give people a shot. She goes, Some of the other teams are very competitive. She wasn't talking down about it. She's like, but that's just not us. She's like, you know, we let non-residents come in our team. But like Brambleton and Willisford, yeah, they're really serious. And I was like, OK, so I just wanted to see what this team were like. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, Wednesday we had a, a meet. We had to meet against Willisford. Right. And they came out. They had a chant. <laughs> they had a chant. And I was like, damn. Like they, they were, so we had 50 kids on our team. They had, I don't want to exaggerate, but I think 250 kids. It was just insane. All marching in unison. I mean, I was like, yo, this is like a military. Like they did a <laughs> chant. I, I was like, what is this? Like, uh, uh, I didn't understand where it was. And it was awesome. It was cool. It was cool to see, right? And we have a couple players on our team that are really good. OK, so the way they do it in swimming is you get it de depends on whichever heat you race. It might be the same in track. You're racing against people that are similar in times. So the first heat is the best. 
So like the first four heats are all their team because they're just that good. And then, and, and that's good because it, it encourages people like you don't want someone finishing and taking a shower and then that person, other person <laughs> finishes the race, right? So everybody they know by heat that it's, it's somewhat competitive, right? So we have one person on our team that got in the first heat against the most competitive boys race. And this kid, and he's like short. He's not like, because usually swimmers are really tall and long and, and he's really good. And he didn't, he didn't win. He, he got second place. Uh, but these kids are fast. I mean, they're fast. They do. I mean, they're, they don't go in and like, they can do the flips in the water. And these are kids like nine, nine, 10 years old and they're good. And this kid is unbelievable. And I was like, wow. And he loves to swim. Right. Well, today I dropped my daughter off at practice at eight. He's in the pool. Mm. He doesn't, there's no practice. You cannot practice while the young kids are practicing. But he was in there before eight o'clock. And he wasn't, he was just in the water. He just loves being there. He loves the water. So oh, this, this kid's going to go to college. You can already see it already. He's going to go to college. Loves the water. You know, loves being around the coaches. And he was oh, just talking to them while he set up, just splashing around, getting ready. They got another meet tomorrow, right? And it's just, it's just funny that you can see, like, this is, I mean, this isn't a chore for people. I love coming to trainings. I do. I love coming to trainings. You know, the convention, yeah. What Did I like every single part? No, but man, I got what I need. Right? And it's, it's funny because one thing for me, like I see, and this is another, this is kind of a side note on meetings and trainings and being around people. So the socialization aspect of meetings is so important, right? Because the same thing with swim team, right? Like, <clears throat> I always look at how kids treat other kids. I always look at that. I always look at how coaches treat other kids because the coaches are young. They're like 22, 23. I look at how do they treat the top players, but also how do they treat the players that are not good at swimming? Because you learn so much. How important are your socialization, socialization skills, right? Because this isn't Instagram where you can just type it. You guys got to talk to people. You got to look at people in the eye. You got to have a firm handshake. You got to be positive. Anybody can write anything, but what does your body language say? Your words are only 7%, right? You got to come in. You got to move fast. You got to, some of you guys, right? You got to look good before a meeting. You got to iron your shirt. You got to shave. You got to look well groomed. This is part of building a tent. You think people are going to follow you? They're not. They're not. You're not going to get anybody that has a higher leadership level, right? Hector Lamarck, you saw said, I said, look, if there's a zero to 10 leadership level and you you can only recruit probably three or four levels below you. That's, that's, I mean, you could get lucky, but it really doesn't work like that. So if you're a 10, you can recruit a six. Well, if you're a five, you can only recruit one or two. One or twos are followers. They can't lead. So if you can, if you're a seven, eight or nine, you can recruit a five or six, which means you can recruit leaders and leaders can build. That's why you got to increase your leadership in coming to meetings. It's not just what you hear. It's also how you interact with people. You know, part of the people skill side, because I know, I know, mm -hmm. I trust me, I know this. I did this happened to me a lot. You get beat up a lot out there. Not, and I'm not talking about people saying no. Sometimes no is no, that's okay. But sometimes people make you feel bad, don't they? They stonewall you. They say certain things that you get timid of asking again for another appointment. If someone says no and they're polite about it, it's cool. It's no, it's polite. Hey, look, no, 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 just no, you know, I got somebody or this and that, and you try to overcome. But sometimes it's like, yeah, you know, and they make you feel really bad or they smirk or they make snooty or snide remarks, right? And you obviously want to get violent, okay? Because if you're like me, that's what you want to do, okay? And as much as that would make you feel better. And if it was medieval times, an eye for an eye, I believe that, okay? <laughs> OK, but here you will lose your license. That's the unfortunate part. OK. But the worst part is if you let it sit with you, you know, I, like, I look at these meetings, they got me tough man. to combat people, to handle things, to 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 deal with all that stuff, because you're right. No doesn't always mean no. Sometimes when people say stuff to you, it really does hurt your feelings. It bothers you. These, these, sometimes these people are these are people you care about or you like or you know they'd be a great client, and it sits with you for half an hour, forty-five minutes, a day or two. 
But I always got what I needed to get here. The socialization, the, the confidence, the strength to go back and face the rejection as many times I needed to till I was done. Right? So, all right. I know I'm jumping all over the place. Energy. You know, so look, some of the things that we have to change in our mood, obviously, punctuality. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I will start that on Fridays for sure. Okay. Don't know how I'm going to direct this with Saturdays. Okay. But on Saturdays, I just want you to understand this. Okay. Uh, we have 20 to 30% of our group coming ridiculously late. Yeah. You're not going to grow a meeting. You're not going to make any money. And you're setting a terrible <laughs> example for people. Okay. Now, Either you're teaching it or you're allowing it. I am allowing it. I take full responsibility for this. Okay. Don't know how I'm going to change on Saturdays yet, but expect some changes. Okay. Nothing probably crazy, but get your butt here on time. But Fridays, there will be a sign on training has started. Watch on YouTube. Come back later. Okay. Because I want you in your seat the whole time, no phones, no distractions, no talking for an hour and a half to get you ready to go to war out there because you're not ready. You're soft because it is a battle out there. It's not easy out there dealing with these clients and recruits. It's fun. It's better than a job, but you still got to be good. And I'm freaking twinking you up in here. I look at some of the other teams in there. In the convention, man, you know, and I know I'm 39. I'm a freaking dinosaur. You know, they're coming out <laughs> one o'clock. They got all this energy. I'm tired. I'm checking my pulse. I'm like, man, we ain't ready for battle. We ain't, we're not game time ready. They're in freaking full. They're they're in full contact. We're in shorts. Crying to the coach. We can't do two a days. You're not even ready to build a meeting. You can't come on time. You're not ready. And I don't care what awards you've gotten. I can look every time on top turnout if you organize rides, if you have a good attitude, if you're inviting more people. You don't have people. You don't understand it yet. You just you just haven't gone that far down the river. And part of it is just, you know, endurance, man. Being able to freaking swim that length of the pool. So. Punctuality, man, we've gone very far. It's, it's, I mean, when people can come literally with 10 minutes left, I mean, I did that in college, like right when I was about to fall, fail out of that class. What time's the class? 11 to 1? Okay, I'll, I'll show up at 12.50. Like, it's it's just, it's and, and, and it's you guys too. Some of you guys, it's the leaders in here, man. You know, come in, you know what Lombardi time is, right? 15, 20 minutes early. For the meeting, not 929, not 930. Right. So also energy, right? Look, man, you know, we 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 don't have crazy amounts of recognition. We don't have to, we're not promoting 150 RVPs. You might have one license. Like, why would you ever stay in your seat during recognition? We got three people to get recognized <laughs> in our office. Four people. Some people got a sprint district. Some well, not sprint. Some people got to district. Some people got a license. Some people pat their SIE. It's the third time. And we got freaking. What example are you setting for other people on here? You you're sitting down. You know, we used to do this. I, and I had an office one time. It was a smaller office. We had kind of fragmented our team. We'd split different offices. But I say you remember this. We would stand up, and some people would stand up on chairs because I knew we were smaller. I was like, look, we got to be even more loud. Like, look, I don't care how weird it is. Man, make people feel great. High five people. Give people hugs. These are your teammates. They go across stage, man. You saw them, right? I mean, you know, it's funny because, like, and I, you know, I, this is this is recorded, so I'm just a little careful, right? It's funny because, you know, like I said, you know, there's irony, right? So my daughter is, like, thank God. Not thank God, but guys, but she is really good at swimming. She's, like, I told a couple of people, I was like, yeah, man, I don't know my daughter, but she might be tight. <laughs> And she is already in, like, it, it was her first meet, first week of practice. She won both her races. And I was like, even the coach was like, wow. But my son, he's not. Like, he's just not. But my son wants to try. And I said, hey, I don't care what you do. Just finish the race. I said, just finish the race. Because it's hard. Because many people that age, you know, because you're swimming, it's hard to go up and back. And there were a lot of 
did not finish is in the race. I go, he said, don't worry about it. I don't care what your time is. Just finish the race. He's nervous. I mean, he, you can see him because they line you up in, by the heat and you're getting ready to go. And he's terrified, <laughs> petrified. I wanted to be able to pull him out of the race. But he did it and he finished, right? But you know what? He's got a couple. The reason why he did the race is because the swim team, he didn't want to do swim team. He hates cold water. He didn't want to do it. He's like, I don't want to. But four of his people in his class are on the team. He's like, all right, I'll do it for my friends. They all went to the edge of the pool cheering him. He wouldn't have done it. He wouldn't have done it for me. But his peers that were in his class, he's, and he, you can hear. And there were many times in the thing, they said, come on, you got it, you got it, you got it. These, the four kids, they're good. They've been doing it for three years. He doesn't know it's his first race. He's been doing it a week competing. But he finished because his friends were cheering him on to finish. And you saw, right? It was awkward. The, he was like so far, right? Delete this from this later, okay? Then I'll deny this vehemently, okay? Um, but he was like, like we were looking like he wasn't swimming. He was doggy pound just trying to finish, but he finished, man. He finished. And it's weird because I got like somebody that like is like getting the ribbons, winning, and then someone's just trying to finish the race. It's just weird. And the same family, you know, it's not like you got one and two, like they're both. Three. But that's awesome. I don't care because you know what? I'm proud of my son for what he did, and I'm proud of my daughter for it. As long as you reach the best that you can do and reach your potential, it's good, right? But think about that. Like, you know, some people, they come and they pass the test. They've taken it five times. They're coming just to get recognition from you guys. They don't even they, – they have zero intention of making a sale. <laughs> that is not actually why they got the license. They won't even send their paperwork in. But they want you to say, finish the race. They want you to freaking clap. When they make this walk up to the front, and, and we have our teammates sitting down. I don't understand that. And, and this is not on the new people. It's on you. You don't make them stand up. You stand up. And, yeah, you can maybe give them a look or, you know, clap really loud right in their ear. Like, oh, yeah. You know? Sorry. You know? But, you know, like, we're, but, you know, that, that, this is the environment, man. A high energy environment. Now we're we're gonna learn. We're, this is we don't have a rah rah environment. We probably have too much training. <laughs> okay, but during the portions where you introduce yourself to people, you know, like in our gym, right? We have a gym, and one of our coaches. If there's a new person, and and at the beginning, like say Shondell comes, no one knows who Shondell is. But anytime you come up, you always see the coach say, "Hey, I'm here for the first time," right? So what does the coach do? Do you remember? He'll go, who knows her name? If you don't know it, you got to do sprints. They, 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 they make us do burpees, but it's basically like sprints. But hey, who's, who knows her name? And then they'll, they'll lecture us. They'll be like, hey, you understand this gym is a community. It's not, it's not weightlifting. So I'm making people feel welcome. And like, damn. And, and next time you're like, you don't want to talk to them, right? Be like, hey, man, what's up? Where are you from? It's Calvin Ryan, then you walk away. <laughs> They're answering. You knew those. I got some. I got some. Right? But, like, and, you know, and then you'll talk to them. Hey, how's this? How's that? They talk to you. You know, you, you know that, that's what we're doing here. Man. You know, we want our people to stay and feel good and want to come to these things. You know? This is a corporate event where, like, yes, Caleb got promoted and he took your job. Caleb didn't take your job. This license... Per, there's only it's not only 10 people pass the test. So because he passed, your person can't pass. No, you make these, you know, some people SIE 663, 26. You know, they earned a promotion, district division leader. I mean, it's it is they're heroes, man. They are heroes in this environment. And we have to make them feel like that. So energy, clapping, um, you know, volunteering, right? Like, you know. In any organization, whether it's it's swim meets, whether it's AA, I mean it. Like they they send out volunteers, where it's the moss, everything. They 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 run on volunteers, man. This is an actual business, but you know, like do stuff. You know, it's 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 not fair that Thomas has to do every single thing. And, and, and obviously, I'm going to leave a bunch of people out, but a lot of people, other people do stuff. Okay, but, you know, see what we can do, man. 
you know, you, that means you're more engaged, more involved. You care about the meeting. The meeting is more yours because one day this is a visual that you will have your own. Yeah. But when it's my meeting, it'll always remain my meeting. But when you can take ownership of the meeting, one day you'll have your own meeting. You know, so we, you know, I, I don't know, we'll, maybe we'll make a list of stuff that we need to do to make sure that the meetings run, whether it's, you know, I know on whenever we do our ops, Shondell, you do the, the Thursday, I mean, the, the sign in sheet, sometimes the pictures, you know, that's a big deal too, right? You know, the pictures for group meetings, you know, people, they want to see the picture. That's what they want. They want a picture on group. I passed the test. I won top turnout. I did the, I did the, uh, I, you know, I won the uh, appointment setting. I won Top Gun. They just want to see their picture in there, right? I mean, recognition, likes, all that stuff. <clears throat> Rest. Okay, look. I want to be very careful about this, okay, what I'm going to say here, because I know that millennials dress different, and I mean that sincerely. Okay, so... I'm not expecting us to come in like we're Edward Jones. <laughs> I mean, I'm th this is not a joke. Okay, um, I know people have different hair now. Okay, whether it's you know braids, whether it's tight here, where it's long, where there's lines in the hair, all that stuff. Okay, I know that you know people wear blazers and jeans. Sneakers are very popular, and I know Saturdays are hot. I'm not saying that, but you know. Rip sweatpants, no. <laughs> okay, and you know, tighten up your team, right? You know your team, right? Like, look, I love some of the guys here. I'm not going to name any of the names in here because I know some of this stuff is online and we have a handful of people watching. <laughs> um, but you know, like, look, you know, some people they don't take their hats off. Like, look, you know, you got a guy on your team. He were I don't care about that hat. I really don't. You know, if he's a veteran or something, but. You know, some people, they wear their hats and they wear their hats and they got sunglasses on in the meeting. I don't think that's appropriate. And I'm being very nice now. OK, meaning I, I'm nice. I'm not a guy that says, oh, take, you know, when you came in, take off your earrings, do shirt and tie. I don't want to see anything. Right. Cut your hair. I would always do that. I was crazy. But I'm not like that anymore. But I I do feel like we're coming. You know, we, we we're really pushing the line. Not casual. I mean, like like. You know, I like Jordans. I love Jordans. OK, I love Jordans. OK, but, you know, and then I hate saying this, but it's like, look, you're not me. I understand. Well, Shaq, you're not me. You're you're on the come up. You got to go to the kitchen table. You got to sit down with clients. They are judging you. You're already young. You're already inexperienced in the business. You only have a couple months license. You know, I didn't I wasn't like that. You know, when I go on appointments and. and you know, you also have teammates, you know, I mean, like, I'm cool. You're not, you know what I'm saying? So no, I'm just joking, but I, look, I, you gotta, you gotta police your team a little bit better. Okay. Because you gotta lead. This is about leadership, right? And obviously the, the, the nicer you dress, the better you dress, that's going to translate to your team. The, the more you don't, the worse they're going to dress. All right. And dress is important. It is, you know? So I, I, I hate saying that, you know, I mean, it, but, but it is. And, and, and there's also nice stuff and like, you know, some are sneakers, you know, like I got Tom Ford sneakers, you know, I, I'm not throwing it out around like that, but you know, these are dress shoes basically, you know, they're five, seven, eight, $900, right. You're just wearing sneakers, <laughs> you know, like you, you look like you're about to run a 5k, you know what I'm saying? Like not come to a primary meeting, you know? You get what I'm saying? Does, I mean that. Do, do I have to go in anymore if, if people have questions about it? I know, I know I'm also disconnected. Okay. I know young people, they dress, right? I still do not understand skinny jeans. Some of trying to explain it to me. I don't get it. Okay. It's, you know, I don't like the thigh and the, you know what I'm saying on the guys. For girls, it's cool. Okay. Cool. Fit. But the guys, it's just like, you know, when Samir's asking, where'd you get your jeans? Where did, what, what store? And it's Tia. It's like, you know, I don't like that. Okay. So I understand. I understand. It's a new culture of fashion. I get it. Okay. I know if you could, you would dress like OBJ. You know what I'm saying? But 
<laughs> I'm trying to come around, but I just feel like it's just not what we're trying to go for. All right. But hey, talk to me, man. I'm, I'm open for discussion. Not now. You come up after me. Say this. You know, I, I'm, I understand there's young people. That's youth. We want to go young, young, young. 19, 20, 21, 22. These are the perfect ages for us. Right. So I, you know, and we have to act young. I don't want to prejudge anybody, but I do feel like people have to. Our meetings are the holy grail. I always remember that, right? They're, they're, they're the holy grail. I was telling Samir today, um, you know, my my son has just graduated to, like, you learn Arabic, and then you have to read the Quran in Arabic, right? So he's reading our holy book. And he has this awesome Quran teacher. She's really good. And she when she, she just doesn't read, she teaches all the stories within it, which is really... Yeah. <laughs> schedule his test right after he went to the convention because you know he wanted just to he saw the big picture he wanted to build a business here right You want to go take your series 65? <laughs> <laughs> but my uh, my son's teacher, she's really good. So, so like there's there's a couple things you have to do before you actually read our book. Like you you have to watch. Like you you're not allowed to put the book any book over the book, right? The Quran. Like and it was so cool to hear my Quran, my son's Quran teacher telling him this. He's like, no, you know you you know. It, you have to wash, and it's just the symbolism of getting your mind right to read the word and process it and take it really serious. And my son, you know, now he'll ask me, oh, hey, you know, and then, I'll, you know, before you, oh, I got to go, I got to wash. And it's just fun, funny because he's getting in the right frame of mind. That's what our meetings are. I'm just trying to write the compound. If we can improve one or two percent here and there, it's going to mean a lot later, right? If you can get a little bit better, a little, just Invite a little bit more, you know, incorporate these in the scripts, which we're going to talk about a lot. When we do top turn, we're not going to just go through it. It's a big deal. Right. If you can just get a little bit better all the time, where would you be in a couple of years? Right. This is not overnight. Right. I mean, it's not some of you guys. I mean this. You're like my son trying to swim across the pool. You think you're better than you are, but you're not. You need encouragement. You need just to finish the race, man. And some of you guys, you come in, you're a little more talented. Like my daughter, get up and back. Don't worry, right? We're not going to try to test you, but what? We'll see once you've been tested, right? I mean, Cassandra said that the RVP meeting. She goes, we're not going to try to test you, but we'll see who you are once you've been tested because that will happen, right? I tell, I tell my daughter, it's like, look, I know things are going great, but don't you going to get, you know, something's going to happen. I don't know what it is. I'm not trying to be negative. So, hey, keep working. Be <laughs> humble, right? Tell me things can happen, right? What's better, starting fast, starting slow? It doesn't matter unless you finish strong, right? And so I'm excited about the changes that we're going to make today and getting back to some of our fundamentals, which is running unbelievable meetings. And every meeting is important. Every meeting attendance is important. Every meeting you have an opportunity to showcase your growth. And if you do the right things, this is not something, Donald, where you'll do the work and it actually will not pay off. You do the work, you get 100 people showing up, you will have $500,000 of your income. You might even be able to do it quicker. <coughs> but you got to put people in a room. Okay? The difference between recruiters and producers and builders is meeting intent. 
builders have people. I know it's hard. I know it requires leadership. It's a lot of discipline for a period of time, but you guys can do it. So uh, that is what I got from the convention, right? Uh, makes me, uh, you know, as I watch this video, it makes me, uh, reminds me, if you do not have our app, get on YouTube right now. Download the YouTube app. Subscribe to our channel, right? We're trying to grow our following so we can get more content out. We get more viewership. We get more information to people, okay? So make sure your teammates have it. It's a way that we're going to communicate. People watch videos now. They also have it where they can continue. Uh, and we, if we put a lot of content on there, they can just watch a bunch of stuff. This is what people do, right? They get into it, right? Um, my, my wife was telling me a story about how someone, like, they logged his thing, and he had watched 12,000 hours of YouTube. This is an adult. Like, he, when he got, it was like a political thing, you know, American political thing. He was like, went from super liberal. To, and then they said, what happened? He locked, watched 12,000 hours of YouTube videos. But it, it was a, she was trying to explain to me, like, look, people, that's what they do. They watch videos, right? So if we can get people good, positive content for people to watch, they will be more prone to come in. They'll learn more. They can accelerate their development. Uh, to become an RVP, right? So our next big event in September, keep that in mind, right? That's a couple months away. And tomorrow is our next, our immediate event. And when is licensing class, Shanta? So July 13th and 14th is our next licensing class. Nine to six, both days. And we have uh, obviously training tomorrow. I'll let you know about the schedule on Super Monday if we're going to have it. I don't, I don't know if we are. I'll, I'll let you know today. I'll send you a text. Month end is when? Monday at 3 a.m. Tuesday at, in the morning, right? Monday. Yeah. So it's, huh? Wait, it's, Tuesday. it's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. You were wrong, but I'm giving you credit for being right. It's Monday that evening, 3 a.m. You have extra hours, $49 IBA. Yeah. Okay. 100,000 points, a reset. What else is there? Then the bonus, got to qualify at your level. And what's, what's the other thing? What's the other bombshell? $300. Oh, $300 for the, the, the bonus, right? Uh, for one by one. Okay, for every unit, it's 300 bucks. All right? All right, team author, one, two, three. Yeah. <laughs>